welcome to this week's Eminem Show. Micah Hyde and Maddie Glab here as your hosts. We've got a fun guest on with us today, Spencer Brown, a new segment and some fun news as well. And welcome to the playoffs, everybody. Oh my gosh, we're finally here. We are here. We've we're made it through here. 18 weeks of the season. I know. It's it's been it's been a long ride. Um, everyone is is extremely excited to finally be in the playoffs, and it's, it just feels like you know this with this team this year, um, it's been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. Like we just you know we weren't we weren't you know looking ahead or anything like that, but um, we knew we had a good enough team to make it to the to the playoffs at the beginning of the year. So you know a lot of stuff has happened until now, and. We're finally excited to be here. You guys have been through it all and then some this yes, season, and yes. we'll get into that later in the mm -hmm. show, but excited to be in the playoffs. I remember thinking a couple days ago, thinking back to last season, mm -hmm. when the playoffs had ended for the Bills, unfortunately. Their run had ended for the season, and all you could think about was the amount of work that the team put in to get to this moment, and then it was over. Mm -hmm. Just like and that. I was thinking, gosh, we got to do it all again next year mm -hmm. to get to this moment. And, and here we are. We've been through the regular season, mm -hmm. and it's so excited to be in playoff football, so exciting to host a playoff game. Yeah. It is the first time, Micah, that you guys are playing back-to-back -back home 1 o'clock games this entire season. How wild is that? That, you know, from the things that happened this year, <laughs> and then on top of that, the schedule that we've had to endure. Yeah. It's it's been a while, and you mentioned it like you said it perfectly. From from last year's loss to to realizing like we have to do it all over again, but then to have the the, the schedule and the the events that happened this year, and to be here now finally um, with an opportunity to go out here and win a home game in the playoffs at home, it's it's uh, it's truly remarkable. One o'clock game, it's it feels great. Back to back home yeah. games, one o'clock games for the first time the entire season. Like. Yes, please. Just what the doctor ordered <laughs> for the first round of the playoffs. We've got a lot coming up, so let's get in right into fit check here. We had some amazing guys repping some amazing mm -hmm. shirts. Yeah. It was all of the love for DeMar Hamlin yeah. as the Bills players took the field for warm-ups and walked into the stadium for the final regular season game yeah. against the Patriots. And we it. wanted to kind of show off how our guy showed some love for DeMar Hamlin walking in because it was epic. Yes, it was. I see Dane Jackson had some Chase and M's gear on, yes, which, did. by the way, I tried to get on the website and buy some stuff. Sold it out. Was, it's all completely sold out. You know what? And he's got some really cool stuff on oh, there. Oh, he does. He does. Like I said, I got a, I got a fit. You know, he got he got me a fit a couple weeks ago. Um, and so, you know, you I... You are lucky, Yeah, sir. yeah, yeah. I got, I got something at the house. But, no, just seeing, you know, all the guys uh, repping D-Ham is truly remarkable. You know, the, what, what we all went through the last week, and especially what he went through, um, you know, just was, was wild. Like, I'm still shocked and, and can barely talk about it just because um, it, it just... Was a, was a shocking event, and um, you know, just to see the love that the whole world has shared, you know, towards him and towards our team and community is just, um, yeah, I'm speechless even talking about. It. Like I can't, I, I can't even really describe how amazing it was. The love for three shirts that we saw, the We Love Damar Hamlin mm -hmm. T-shirts that we saw. I love the way that our guys styled it. Maybe we can get the picture slides back up here because Roger Saffold, I think, was rocking. He had a designer jacket on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Gucci or what. I think it might have been Gucci. Yeah, it looks but, like Gucci, But yeah. this is me okay, like, not knowing about designer stuff. So I love the pieces that the guys picked to wear yep. with the DeMar Hamlin t-shirts. And, and you've got the Nikes on, you've got the three hats. The three hats are clean, yeah. Matt Milano, again, we talked about how he is just clean just in what he puts Sleek. on. And he had the Chasing Million sweatpants. Yeah, yeah, and Milano. And he had the Prada, the Prada bag, some black sunglasses black hat and it just it all comes together. Just flows. It just Do you flows think together. he picks all that out on his own? Lotto? 100 percent 100 percent 100 percent yeah there's no question. He's he, got a he great taste, great yeah, yeah he doesn't have anybody uh picking stuff out for him. He's 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 got his fits at the crib and he's putting it together and he's seeing what looks good and he's you know he might be might be dressing in front of the mirror and taking pics. You never know. I, that's <laughs> you never if, know. If, that, that, if he's doing that that's on him. 
Um, but uh, he shows up and he, he always has a fits for sure. Well, we absolutely loved seeing what the guys had to wear, had to rock uh, on the sidelines, on the field. And it was also cool to see the NFL also mm -hmm. in warm up t shirts that said, We love DeMar just with the three on them. Yeah, just, just around, around the, the league. Around the league. And, and it was, like I said, it was truly remarkable to see literally every single team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do something that they felt was was honoring Dham, and you know, I just, I, it was it was such a shocking event to even talk about it right now. But you know, when it happened, um, you know, we just were hoping and praying that everything was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And and you know, sitting here right now and knowing that Dham's okay and he's recovering well, um, you know, I, we love him. We love him. Like he, he's, I, I said since day one, he's he's going to be, you know. At one of the best safeties in the league and um, you know obviously whatever whatever he f wants to do in the future that's up to him um, but just seeing the the him as a good kid and seeing everybody come together for him and show so much love um, I love him man I, that's my boy I love him yeah it was really cool the atmosphere on Sunday was something that I don't think a lot of us are ever going to forget it was so no. cool looking into the stands looking into the crowd seeing all the posters seeing the joy and just the sheer happiness I think the collective happiness that we all felt after we were getting all of those incredible updates um, so it, it was it was a game to be at, it was a game to remember, and I really hope that this upcoming Sunday is going to be just as special in terms of a playoff atmosphere and all of that. But we don't, I don't think we want to give a point to anybody this, this week for Fit Check, though. I think everybody gets a point in our yeah, eyes. Deham gets, gets three points. Deham gets three points. Three points for Gryffindor, he's in three the, points he's for Deham. He's in the lead now. He's in the lead now. He's in the lead now. Yeah, yeah, Deham, right. you got three points, man. You, you, you. You deserve that, um, and he, you know he has swag himself. He does. So, so you know he. We've talked about him this year already. Exactly. With, like, what he puts together, what he puts on. Yeah. I was looking back at some photos of Demar and what he had walking into games, and I think one of the colder games he had on a Montclair jacket. That, that I could see him. I could see him wearing that, and yeah, he puts it together. He can go nice little like business. You know, with the suit look, or he can dress down. He can wear the sweats, the jacket, but anything he puts on looks good. So, like okay. I said, every, it was a tribute for Dham. Three points. Three points for him. You take the lead. Three points for Dham. You're, yeah. you're in the lead now. Yep. Sorry, Shaq. No. Dham's <laughs> in the lead. Yeah, Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> Shaq ain't got nothing to say about that. He has to agree with that one. He I think to. everybody agrees with that one. Yeah. All right. Great look back at what the guys had to rock for in this week's fit check. Spencer, thanks so much for coming on with us today. You were a third round pick out of the 2021 NFL draft and you've been thrown into a starting role pretty much since you walked in this building. Mm -hmm. So now that you're in your second year with the Bills, are you finally starting to like get a handle on everything since you were you just jumped in the deep end? Jumped in the deep end, learn how to swim pretty much. That's um, your that's your MO. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think uh, last year was a good like learning block, just kind of figure out life in the NFL and how to handle myself in the building and just kind of establishing a routine. And then this year, I think within the last two months even, is kind of where it's really taken off for me and um, just being proactive and everything and in the training room, outside of outside of football, and then how uh, to go about your business on game day. It's all kind of coming together for me right now. How long did it take you to well, feel like you're that comfortable was, That was my NFL. question. That was really my next question is, you know, my rookie year is kind of just like you, just all over the place. Mm -hmm. Your mind's your mind's racing, you're trying to get the playbook down, you're trying to make your, you know, trying to make plays, and then obviously off the field stuff, you know, people hitting you up, wanting to come to games, tickets, all that type of stuff. Um, and then the off season, it's able to, you know, you catch your breath and you go into year two and you can finally breathe. You know the playbook if you have the same coaches and, and stuff like that, and it's just, it's, it's better, stuff slows down. And so my question for you was, you know, how, I know you just mentioned you felt more comfortable, but how much more comfortable did you feel going out there on game day, playing in front of, you know, all the fans and, and obviously the road games and travel and stuff like that. Did you just, it, everything just slowed down for you? Absolutely. Especially like my first away game that I started was in Kansas City. Mm. So, I mean, insane no environment as well. So, I mean, it's just really, <laughs> now that I've played in a few stadiums and obviously just getting out like even game day routine and things like that or things that I need, um, it's definitely slowed down. I think, um, like you said, off season, I spent most of my off season here last, or the, yeah, last summer for mm -hmm. the back surgery. So, I think, um, I wanted to get away and like be away from the football atmosphere, everything, just kind of train. But I think also being in Buffalo by myself just kind of helped me 
uh, manage it better instead of just showing up for training camp and figure it out from there. So I think a uh, silver lining in there for being here all summer you have nice, helped nice. me out. We know Buffalo, and I feel like Spencer, you just fit what Buffalo is. Yes, and I you think do. maybe maybe one of the most perfect Say pictures it. or Say videos it, that just explained like Spencer Brown is <laughs> Buffalo is when I saw you. What was it? Pouring beer on yourself. I after loved it. You celebrated yeah. a touchdown. How how are you fitting in with this fan base who who also loves to celebrate by pouring beer on themselves? Mm -hmm. you know? The beer thing, I mean, I just got <laughs> thrown into that too. That was a deep end of celebrations. Diggs grabbed it and then handed it to me, and I had no one else to do with it besides stand there. So I started dumping it on myself. That's what happened there. So Diggs was the first domino, and then I just knocked the rest of them over. But I uh, love Buffalo. Um, I feel like it's a very small town feel in, in itself, like coming from 1,300 people in my hometown to small FCS college in Cedar Falls and then Buffalo, it's just kind of like a good transition for me and mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So you, you mentioned coming from a small town. I'm from a very small town also, so mm -hmm. I feel like that's a, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of crazy to be in the NFL right now. Like you look around and you see, you know, your, your name on the locker and you see, you know, pictures of you and people want to autograph and stuff like that. So. How is it for your friends and people like that that come and watch you play? Like, are they like starstruck when they walk in the locker room? And because I know, I know when I first got into the league, um, that's definitely how they were. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think uh, it's it's obviously a war off for me. Like, mm -hmm. it just feels like every day, like coming in here, hanging out with Josh and yeah. all the guys, and then just hanging out together. Like it is college teammates or high school teammates. Mm -hmm. In Buffalo, I've said this to numerous people. It's like a perfect scene for everybody to intermingle and come together, yeah. and just from different backgrounds, it doesn't matter. It just feels like. I told one of my buddies that it feels like high school again. We're all just driving around, hanging at each other's houses, going out to eat, hanging out, watching games, giving each other crap all the time. So, so I mean, it's, 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 it's the best. It's the best ever. And then like, when those guys come in, I think honestly they're, like, they're a little shocked. Like they expect to be blown away too. And I feel like they just kind of fit in with our friend group yeah. regardless of where we are because mm -hmm. everybody's just so uh, tight and close. I think. Yeah. All right, so we've got Northern Iowa here. Mm -hmm. Iowa here. Mm -hmm. Guys, we're both in Iowa for college. Yeah. Do we see any similarities in, in how you two were brought up throughout college football? I know it was different schools. It's great there dudes. Any, any mm. similarities here between Buffalo and Iowa? Iowa State, you know. Yeah, we weird. don't mess with Iowa State. Oh, okay. Iowa Nobody State, likes there, No one really likes Iowa AJ State. Klein, AJ Klein. AJ like Klein. He's, he's okay, yeah. Go on. Ike, Micah, yeah. you and I guys. Epinesa, yeah. Just, Iowa State's kind of like the Harry Potter. He's kind of stuff him in the closet oh, a little bit. Wow. Yeah, nobody wow. likes Iowa State. But, but no, Iowa State is always up for an upset, though. That is true. That's all they can do. They they win about four or five games a year, and they try to upset people. That's what they do. Anyways, um, <laughs> enough talking about them. But yeah, I think that you know going going to to you know play college football at Iowa was a was a different experience um, for me especially. Um, and so you know, I just learned a lot about football. And there's not much to do there, just like here. I mean, there's a lot more to do here than in Iowa, but. Um, you just focus on football, and it kind of just paved the way for me to focus on my career, and here I am. I would, I would have the same thing. I mean, there's not a ton going on in Iowa. It's kind of like what I talked about earlier. It's just everybody's just kind of together. They do things together. They spend time together, and they bond over that, and I think I kind of have the same feeling here. Um, Ike Budker, he's from Cedar Falls. Um, he went to Iowa, and then I knew him just through mutual friends, and then as soon as we met, it was just kicked right off because we're kind of like the same people. So, they uh, really are. Yeah, yeah, I feel like, yeah, you just like Ike. Iowa's good. Go Hawks. Go, go Panthers. Hawks, go Panthers. Cyclones. Yeah. So when you were in your rookie season, who are some of the offensive linemen that you bonded with right away? I know you mentioned Ike Bucker, but who are some other guys that are, are close to you that have kind of helped you along the way? Ike right away, just being from Iowa and mutual friends, and he helped me a ton on my first OTAs here, and he's also kind of like, he was like my foot in the door with everybody else. He'd, he'd been here before. He vouched for you. He's like, this knows. kid is cool. It's okay, I, I met Mitch Morris through Ike. I guess he came back for OTAs, and I met him. We went out to dinner, and it was my first time meeting Mitch. Beard's just looking luscious. Head's just <laughs> freshly polished. It looks like this. I mean, he was <laughs> black shades, black T-shirt, just looking yoked out of his mind. Like, I was like, oh, this guy's, this guy's pretty big. He's intimidating yeah, a little yeah. bit. But then I met Mitch, and he, he's kind of looked out for me a little bit, too. And then as I got to know guys, Doyle, um, him and I get along really, really well. And then this year, I feel like our old line room is just uh, really, really cohesive, and we all get along super well. So uh, it's, it's been a good year for sure. Nice. So we had D-Doc on a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, there was a lot of those. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> just not the entire time. But, uh, you know, we, we asked him about the, the O line group. Um, and I said I would love to be a fly on the wall in that room because you guys are all hilarious. You guys all have a good time. Love to eat, love mm -hmm. to talk junk. But we asked him who the funniest guy in the room was, and who do you feel like it is? 
funniest guy in the room. I mean, it depends on what kind of funny you're going for. If you're looking for a funny story, Roger. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for a funny off-the-wall comment that has no correlation with anything going on, Alec Anderson or Ryan Vandemark. <laughs> but, like, when they like when Vandy says something, it's like, I don't even, I don't even think of that kind of yeah. stuff, man. Yeah. But then I think all of us kind of just rebound off each other really well. I'm um, giving Bates a hard time. He'll freak out for you. I mean, it's just giving each I feel other like everybody hard. Gives I mean, Bates a hard time. Yeah, dude, it's awesome. <laughs> Sit next to him in meetings. Incredible, because he's he's more like detailed to the T, and I'm just kind of laid back, giving him mm-hmm. a hard time. Thank Shout out you. Bates, though, I love that guy. Speaking of the O line room, um, we kind of discussed this a little bit, but you guys have different body types. You are tall, you are big athletes. You have to be for the position that you play in. You are specifically very tall, Spencer. That's it. You're yes. up there with Greg Rousseau and Tremaine Edmonds. Mm-hmm. How do you find clothing? Uh, you don't. Look at this. <laughs> me? This is my normal. You're going to make fun of me. It's just I got to deal with every single day. But, uh, yeah, I guess I have to figure someone out to get a designer or a stylist. I, I feel like Maybe you do little, good, man. You look good. stitch fix for men. Ooh. Yeah, you look good, man. Just go, yeah, just, just pick it out. Maybe get it sized a little bit or get it tailored a little bit. I'm afraid to good, wash man. anything, though, dude. That's what I'm going to shrink It's going to shrink it? I feel yeah, like it. Just throw it out so by another one. All. Yeah, I feel like you probably had, like, horror stories in the past of, of stuff being washed or dried and it just oh, shrinks right away. So I, mean, just, I just bought this $80 sweatshirt. It's awesome. And then I wash it once and I take it out and it's just shrunk down tight on my shoulders like sick. I paid eighty dollars to wear this Did one. Did you time. try it? No. Oh. Maybe I'm washing it with hot water. Yeah, you're probably you're doing some washing cold water. But I've seen you I've seen you walk in the complex and you know, we get the pictures every single yeah. week because we do a, a you know a segment called He's Fit Check. Bro, you get you put it on, man. Yeah, I gotta plan months ahead though. You do I'm you? like, I'm gonna wear this one week seven. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't touch it until then. And outside of that, I wear sweatpants every day. My brother makes fun of me and says I just wear pajamas to work, which yeah, I pretty much do. It's all good, man. That's baggy we sweats. all do. We all do. So I have like three good pairs of clothes. Don't go out often. You can wear them however many times. Yeah. Exactly. Then when you get your picture taken, it's all That's good. Right. You guys should, like, the offensive linemen should share clothing. I mean, you guys I all sick. source from different places or maybe a lot of the same places because... There's only so few places that make stuff that's big enough for you guys. So I, I would love to see you in D-Docs clothes. You should just start a group oh, text like, hey, Dion, can I borrow your snowball chain? Well, Raj said, Raj said they had some clothes up for grabs. They're walking mm-hmm. Amiri or whatever that's called. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it's called. M-I-R-I. I don't know how you pronounce it, but that's it. <laughs> a little Gucci slide with some fur or something. I hey, if, if I saw you walking in Spencer with that. Spencer Brown with some Gucci slides. Yeah, you're for, sure, you're for sure on fit scene. check. I'm, we're we're going to make sure you're on fit check and we're going to talk about it for an hour. I'm down. <laughs> That'd be cool, man. We appreciate you having for coming sure, over. Man. Thanks, Thanks for coming Thank on, you. Spence. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate it. It's time to head into the film room for a little bit of a film session with Micah Hyde. And we had to relive what happened against the Patriots because it was just too good not to talk about yes, it was. again. So let's roll the click clip of Naheem Hines just going off. Listen, everybody is, everybody has anxiety right now because, you know, we haven't really tackled, we haven't hit anybody, and Naheem just says, you know what, let me just solve this problem now. Let me put the team on my back. Let me put the team on my back, you know, let me just cut this thing back, take it down the sideline, hitting 21-3, talk about it, next-gen stats. Boy was rolling, picking them up, putting them down, and it just, I mean, I, I just felt like the weight was lifted off my shoulders after this play. What, tell me what, where you were you standing look, on the sideline, what was going through your mind as this was as you know, this was happening? I, you know, because I, I feel like this is a play where it was like, where were you when this happened? Yeah, I, I think at this point I realized it was colder than what I thought. So I, I was going- Were you in the locker room changing? No, no, so I was, I was on the sideline. I, I, it might have been right when I was going to grab my coat or something like that, and I just look up and he's just, He's taking it to the crib, and I'm like, there's no way this is happening when right did, now. When did you know it was going for a TD? Right We're watching here. A t- a tight right here. Clip of it. Okay. it was right here because I saw 30 had the angle. 30 had the angle, but I'm like, nah, he's not. Like, we, we see we see Naheem every day in practice, and when he gets to that sideline, he's flying. And so at that, at that point, I knew he was taking it to the crib, high-stepping like Dion on the first one. And, you know, I don't want to jump forward, but and the next one. Um, and uh, it was just, it was cool to see a great pickup that we, that, uh, that Bean brought in, um, yeah. you know, a few weeks ago. Added so much to our special teams. And the guys on special teams, like, they went to this game trying to win the game on special teams. Micah, if you take away the two touchdowns, that's the game. It would have been a different game for the yep. Bills. Yep. And, but, it, it, but that's what's cool to see because, you know, with a team that we have, obviously we have, you know, Josh Allen, mm-hmm. Stephon Diggs, and, 
you know, whoever else you want to talk about on offense, we have a, a, a very good defense and guys that are out there making plays and, and as you saw the other day, coming up with interceptions and stuff. But when you have a special teams like what we have and they're able to, to change a game like that, score points, but also on, on you know, kick off, pin them back and all that type of stuff, um, that's, that's when the game changes. That's yeah. when we become a full, complete football team. And as you saw with that, with that kick return and, you know, the next one that we're about to view. To do it once, but to do it twice. Yeah. Not easy to do in the yeah. NFL. Yeah, I saw 11 people in the history have done this. Yeah. 11 people. 11, times 11 people have NFL taken history. two to the crib. Like, this is insane. I was messing around with Taiwan uh, after this fast day. Bro, you didn't even touch anybody. You, <laughs> you just running. You just running side by side, high stepping like <laughs> Dion. Like he just dancing. scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it, man. Like, this place was going crazy. This was probably the loudest. One of the loudest times I've ever heard this stadium. It was it was rocking. It was amazing to see. Like no one can even believe it on the side. Everyone's like, that's just really happened again. Yeah, he done happen again. And I thought he was going I thought he was going for three. Oh. I thought he was going for three, but they wouldn't kick it to him again. So they you know do it. they wouldn't they do said, it. Uh uh we're not gonna do this again. Uh, the fact that the first Good blocks, look at that. Okay dirty, mm -hmm. okay Quan, Taiwan, I love it. The fact that the first kickoff return that he had that was taken in for a touchdown happened three years and three months after the last time a Bills player did it. You know, it's poetic justice. Yeah. We have seen so many threes. She's got the chills. Yeah. She's got the chills. We have seen th so many threes mm -hmm. across Bills Mafia, across stats and things like that over the last week for DeMar Hamlin, who of course rocks three. Mm -hmm. So incredible. And the last person who did that for the Bills is sitting right next to me. Yours truly. You return an onside kick for a team. You know, I don't, I don't listen. This, I, to me, fans. to me, it's nothing like that. You know, that's like you that. Only, you only went 45 yeah, yards. Yeah, I only went 45 Micah. yards. Like that was like Naheem taking to the crib after you know <laughs> where everybody was was had a tough long week and a tough long season. Yeah. Um, and to close out the regular season, what he did was was on a whole nother level. And then you know, a few years back, I was able to to get lucky and. We got and, it. We've got the clip. We gotta we gotta watch this. Yeah. Onside kick. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Spin we're move. up by three at that time. 360 trick play. Yeah, yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. now and then you get lucky, you know, with the with the all reds on. So it was the first onside kick return for a touchdown since 2010 when you did this. Mm. It happened in week seven. The Bills won 31 to 21. This gave them the 31 to 21 lead. So this was right at the end of the game yeah. when you did this. Uh, you've got to have some athleticism to get up in the air and grab the ball like you did, though. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little just bit. Just a little bit. You know, maybe that's that's where my uh, three-sport athlete, you know, growing up in uh, small-town Ohio, playing baseball, playing mm -hmm. basketball, um, going up and getting this rebound and, and uh, using my hands to catch it, spin. The guys did an amazing job blocking. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know for a fact, like, as I'm running towards the end zone, I'm like, I'm supposed to go down. I'm supposed to go down. The game's I over. I think Sean said like, after I'm, the yeah. game too, like we, we I'm supposed to go down, but I'm like, this Mike is too good to be true. It's too good to be true. Like, you, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But uh, <laughs> you know what? We ended up winning the game, and uh, everything worked out. And, and look, at, look at Lee Smith, Leroy coming to tackle me oh, in the end zone. I miss you, Lee Smith. Yeah, man. It just just a great lots. time, man. Just another uh, remarkable win by by us in the last six years to be able to return kicks whether it's punts mm -hmm. whether it's uh, a kick return whether it's an onside kick the amount of pressure and anxiety you probably feel if you're standing back there the only guy or if you're returning an onside kick yeah. that there's about to be an onside kick you don't know where the ball is going to go you don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. what is that type of feeling when the ball is getting kicked like that. Okay, so there's there's three different levels. So if we're talking about like kickoff return versus punt return versus onside kick, uh -huh. that's three different three different things. So we'll start off with kickoff return. Kickoff return, you're catching the ball. It's easier to catch. It's end over end. Mm -hmm. um, so those are those are easier to catch. You don't know necessarily if it's going to be short or deep, but um, those are easier. And so you catch that thing, but the guys are running full speed to to hit you. You know they they're trying to knock your head off. And so, uh, but you also have your guys blocking. So you know you have your plays to try to. You know, cut it back, hit the hit the holes, whatever it may be. So that's that's one thing. Um, it's pretty pretty nerve wracking, but you can get through it. You can get through punt it. Punt return. The hardest part of punt return is catching that ball. Mm. Like when you go from college to the NFL, yeah. it's it. You know that that ball is up there for <laughs> it seems like twenty Hang seconds. Time, baby. Hang yeah, time. you know it's close to five seconds. You're up there and you kind of peak. You're up there, kind of peak. Um, I always say if you can catch a punt in the NFL, 
you shouldn't be nervous doing anything else. Like people are nervous to mm -hmm. public speak. No, if you can, if I can catch a punt in the NFL, I'm not nervous to do anything else. Anything in, this world. in life. Yeah, it's it's swim with sharks yes. doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know about that. See, <laughs> we were talking about this the other week. I don't do animals, so um, I am nervous to do that. But yeah, and then you have onside kick. Always comes at a high pressure situation. You need to get it to win the game, and so that's where it's like I'm just sweating. Yeah, I yeah. Don't, but for me, I'm just like, you know what? I just, I just, I close my eyes before the Can't balls. Even think. You before just the, react. don't think. You don't think. You just go, just go get the ball. You just go get the ball. React to the ball if it's high. You just patiently wait on it, like I did right here, um, and just time your jump. Go get it. And I'm expected. You timed it perfectly. Well, I'm expecting to get hit. That's why I kind of turn my That's back. That's why you turn your body. So I'm expecting mm -hmm. to just get laid out. And so it didn't happen. And my boys were blocking for me. I laid it on my feet, and I'm like, oh, the end zone is speaking to me. So I'm gonna take it in. But. Three different, situ three different, you know, high pressure situations: mm -hmm. kickoff return, punt return, and onside kick. Um, all three, you gotta have good hands, good vision, and um, yeah, just be an athlete. Shout out to Naheem Hines for doing yeah. it twice against Patriots in that type of in that type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I was in the radio booth watching, and we're kind of supposed to be a little bit quiet because the the radio broadcast is going on, uh -huh. and, and Chris Brown and Eric Wood were calling the game. And I'm on the last bench, so I'm I'm maybe 12 feet away from them, yeah. and I am jumping up and down, screaming. And Got Eric to. Wood looks at me, and I'm like, "Oh, I should probably be quiet in this moment." But it was the Eric Wood. You'll be amazing. all right, man. She was excited. I was, she was excited. excited. Yeah. Sorry, Eric. Yeah. You know, me and me and Steve Tasker like to get a little bit loud back there during plays. Sometimes when good things happen, sometimes when bad things yeah. happen. Yeah. Uh, but that was such a good thing, and it set up the game so so perfectly. Yes, it did. Hopefully, he does it again in the playoffs. I would I love know, kick it to, him. to see that. We'll yeah. See. Maybe they won't. Uh, we have a new segment we want to reveal to the M and M show viewers uh -oh. this week. It's called Guess the Teammate. All right. I like this. Okay. I know my teammates pretty well. Yeah. We'll you know, I've had a whole we'll season. See. I've had a whole season to learn about my teammates. You know, I've been playing, so, mm -hmm. so I feel like been, I'm gonna be good at this. You've been studying their bios on the <laughs> yeah, Buffalo Bills website. So if you go to the Bills website, each player has a bio mm -hmm. where they answer some fun questions. Based on those some fun questions, I'm gonna have you okay. guess what you, got who for you me? think it is. We're gonna do two players. If you get these two guys really quickly, we're gonna do another one. Okay. First one. It should be easy, Micah. Okay, let's check it out. Teammate number one, his favorite food is sushi. His pet peeve is nonchalant people. And his favorite show is The Sopranos. You get three guesses. Sushi? And if you need another Nonchalant hint, people and Sopranos. Yeah. This is very difficult. What? Um, I gonna, feel like there's one hint. I'm gonna in go there with. I'm gonna away. go with J A. J A. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw that out there. I don't. I, I don't know. Wrong answer. Um, Sopranos. Um, I feel like you think this is easy, but it's more difficult okay. for me. I will tell you, the Sopranos is, is the, the is hint that's supposed hint, to give this away here, Mike. Yeah, maybe I don't know my teammates as much as I thought. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, no. Keep keep guessing. Do you um, want another hint? Yeah, I do want another hint. You got another one? I don't know if this is going to help give it away anymore. His favorite app is Spotify. That's could be anybody. Uh, okay. Focus on the Sopranos. Okay. Focus on the Sopranos. Who do you think likes to watch the Sopranos or who do you think embodies the Sopranos? If I say one word, you're gonna. I know feel like it. I feel like if we had if if we just had maybe Spencer Brown on, I'm gonna say him. No, no I, I, that's wrong. I didn't want to okay. make it that easy. Okay. Uh, I'm he's, just. He's I'm on going defense. Off. He's on defense. He's on defense. And favorite, favorite food is sushi. Yeah, we've talked about him already on this show. Milano. <laughs> Really? Yes. Never would have guessed. Didn't know that. Sushi, nonchalant what? people, Sopranos. His favorite restaurant is Bar Bill. That wouldn't have helped you at all either. No, no, His no. His favorite book is The Daily Stoic. Yeah, this is going to be really difficult. I thought this was going to be a lot easier. Like, I thought I knew my teammates better. <laughs> this is going to be, I, I should have read their bios. Sopranos, you know, Italian, 
Matt Milano is is our I was, Italian I was, dude on this roster. I was thinking of people that like quote movies a lot, and like Josh, Josh is one, is, okay. Gabe Davis is one. Okay. So that's kind of where my head was at. So let's see what the other, let's see what right, the other ones are. All right. So we're gonna say you got that after a couple guesses. Sweet. Thank you. And get, I got we're a gonna point. give you three guesses. You got that on your third guess. Okay. Cool. All right. Second teammate. This favorite show of this teammate is The Office. Josh. Nope. Don't guess yet. Don't guess yet. Okay. His favorite app is the Bank of America app. <laughs> and he wants to learn how to sing. You said The Office right there, and I feel like it gave it away. Because there's only a few guys that love the, that talk about The Office 24-7, and it's Josh, Gabe Davis. It's Gabe Davis. No. It's not Gabe Davis? No, it's not Gabe Davis. Which one of your teammates would say, my favorite app is the Bank of America app? I feel like a bunch of guys would say that. <laughs> they love their money. What you mean? Like, there's a bunch of guys. Um, okay, then who wants to learn how to sing? I do. I literally want to learn how to sing. Um, this guy is this guy's close to you, Micah. Like, what do you mean close to me? Like, you're, like, around, you mean, like, him, position you're around him a lot. Okay. I'm not going to give away more than that. I'll give away defense again. I'm not, I don't see Poe as an office guy. It's not Poe. Okay. That was my third guess. I'm sorry. I, I'll, take, I'll take that as in the guess. Gary, Who is it? His favorite sports jersey is Dwayne Wade. He wants to learn how to ski. This isn't me, is it? His favorite movie is Inception. This is me? No, it's not you. I was going to do <laughs> oh, I'm that and be I'm like, about to it's say. you. I'm about to say, because all that other stuff kind of sounded like me. This guy's in your DV room. Uh, I'm sorry, I kind of, what was the last one? His favorite movie is Inception. His favorite vacation spot is Hawaii. Okay, Taryn, Taryn? It's Taryn Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Taryn Johnson, he's, that is. His favorite app is Bank of America. He has and he never wants said anything about the office. Sing. We talk about shows and movies all day, every day. What show does he talk and about? And he's never talked about. He talked about like new movies and new shows that have came mm -hmm. out. And I ask him, I, like he's my movie and show guy. I say, Taryn, what do you watch right now? So I, never in his life have he said anything about the office. You'll have to take this to him today. Tomorrow, oh, he's gonna hear about it from this. Whenever he's gonna hear about it from this. Somebody hit him up and tell him. And you're going to have to see if his favorite show is really The Office. Yeah, I'm going to find out tomorrow. You know what? I, I will say. I'm going to record him, and I'm going to send it to you. And, and I'm going to say. Yeah, send it to me. I will say, though, these might not have been updated for a while. Yeah, because that's why I thought that was kind of me. Because this could, this could be uh, first year, second year, Taron Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could yeah, be yeah. a new man by now. We don't know. Yeah, you know what? That makes sense. He's changed. Oh, he has changed though. Yeah. He went from 24 to seven, and that changed his whole personality. He's a different dude now. We'll get him on the show one of these days and talk about it. But he's he likes to talk a lot now, and I'm and I'm not I'm not for it. So. I hear you've said that he likes to make fun of you. He does. He calls me old head. Mm -hmm. um, that's not even that's not even the issue. He, he t says that the Poe too, and that's not the issue. It's just he just talks a lot. He's like my little brother. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he's my little brother. All right. Well, those two you didn't get right away, okay. so I feel like two two for this segment is good. So yeah, we have Matt Milano and Taryn Johnson, two guys who are on defense. I don't with know you. him. I guess I gotta talk to him. You more. gotta you gotta look at the player bios. Yeah, I do. You can't cheat like that though. Okay. All right, we've got one more segment in our show today. It's Micah's minute. I don't know if we'll be able to get through each one in a minute because okay. these are some great topics that we're going to talk about. But if our guys can uh, can roll a clock back there, we'll, we'll keep the shot clock going. So number one, I said there was going to be some fun news mm -hmm. to reveal on this show. So Micah, you have been working your way back from this injury. Yes, I and have. And I don't want to give it away. So tell so, me what's going down. Tell me, tell me what's the newest update that we so got so on. i cannot say i'm back that's not like it's not true but i'm able to practice um i i went and saw my doctor out in, uh, out in la a couple of days ago and um he gave me the okay to practice and so you know i'm i'm extremely excited i've worked my ass off uh, this <laughs> this 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 whole time to get back to where um you know i could just try to help this team i just said I've, I've admired this team this whole time been able to sit back and watch um, just 
you know, this team win ball games and just go out there and, you know, put their bodies, put their minds, everything in meetings, all that type of stuff, see how they work. And I just want to be a part of it. So, you know, when I saw my doctor said I could start practicing, so I'm, I'm truly excited. All right, you answered that in under a minute, so I'm going to answer or ask a follow-up, yeah. I should say. Rehab for you, was it a different type of rehab process since mm -hmm. it is your neck? I mean, usually, and not usually, I don't want to say that, but you hear about a, a hand or a foot or an ACL or yeah. a shoulder, and there's obvious parts of your body that you have to avoid moving when mm -hmm. you're rehabbing from an ACL or rehabbing from a shoulder or whatever it, it may be. Yeah. Your neck... I'm sure that's a little bit different it because was. basically your entire body probably feels fine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you had to really limit yourself. Yeah, so so for me it was the longest I've ever went without doing anything, like any activities. Like so when I, from, from when I had surgery until when I got back here, which was um, just right before the, the Green Bay game. So it was roughly like a month or whatever. I, I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't. I wasn't even supposed to pick up the kids. I wasn't supposed to pick up anything in the house, help with groceries, nothing like that. Like I can't lift anything. And so I, I think I really just took the time just to, to you know, just not do anything. And um, I think it really helped me without, without my rehab process because I haven't taken any set, I haven't had any setbacks. That's awesome. Um, I just continued to just, you know, try to get better each and every day. And, you know, here I am today, finally able to, uh, to practice. And, um, you know, hopefully if everything goes well, and, and, you know, a miracle happens, I'm going to be back out there. A true vet right here saying that he listened to everything the doctor said. To I didn't want time. to. Didn't want to. I know it was probably mm -hmm. hard, but to be able to see you take the field again and begin practicing as the playoffs begin, I don't think it's, it's like the perfect ending to the season for, I think, this entire team, for you being able to be back out there with your teammates. And our second point, I think, ties into this perfectly that, you, that I want you to speak on is just being able to get back on the field when your brother, Damar Hamlin, uh, faced a, a crazy freak injury mm -hmm. incident and the kind of take the field almost in his name. And, and yeah. now that he's not going to be with us for, you know, however long you said his future is up to him. Yeah. But but for now, it's cool to see you being able to step in almost in his place yeah. and, and kind of start where things left off for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, this, this, this whole season I feel like uh, Deham and I um, just organically, natural, naturally just developed a bond. Um, you know, obviously we're teammates, obviously we're brothers, we see each other every single day, we talk ball, uh, but just for me getting hurt, um, and even before that, me just trying to help him out, bring him along, um, and I, that's just our whole room in general. We always try to help each other out. It's not like that everywhere, but just from, from beginning of the season on, just trying to bring him along, and then from my injury happening and me just kind of taking a step back and saying, okay, I can't physically be out there, so let me just try to help out Dham And just being in his ear each and every day, just trying to help him out, not too much. And obviously he's a, he has kind of a different style of play than what I have, but when I see something, when I see a nugget, you know, I try to give it to him and say, hey, if you play it this way or do it whatever way, um, you know, maybe you'll be more successful. So if you want to listen to me or not, it's up to you, but this is, you know, just my experience. And so, you know, he listened to us this whole season and, um, you know, really felt like, made me feel like I was, um, you know, a, a part of the team, you know, and, and just, just the everyday grind, being in the meetings and stuff like that. And so uh, I know I got a minute, but this is definitely going over. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then, Go you know, obviously with him, it's all good. Yeah, with the situation that happened with him, you know, unfortunate, scary, everybody, every NFL player, every, every, I had, you know, tons of people blowing up my phone with my family and everybody just, you had to take a step back and realize what just happened. Like, that's mm -hmm. some scary stuff. And you wouldn't want it to happen to anybody that even somebody you don't know in the league, somebody you know, like, it's, it's just scary. And so, you know, f for that situation that happened with him and then for me to finally, um, be able to step back on that field um, and practice, you know, it, it means the world. I just, like I just said, we just organically had this um, uh, kind of bond together this season. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, as soon as I got hurt, you know, my agent tweeted out, I think I tweeted out CN23. Um, in my wildest dreams, I never thought it would be, I thought it was September. I thought it was going to be September of 23. Um, but, you know, I just got, tried to get better each and every day. And, you know, once I just saw my doctor, he gave me the approval to, to start practicing again. And 
Um, it's just a blessing. I, I love this team. I love this organization. I'm going to do everything I can, obviously being smart, mm -hmm. to get back out there and just try to help this team win a Super Bowl because I've been around here way too long. These, you know, a lot of guys have been around here way too long. This, the people in the community um, have, you know, really sacrificed a lot to, to, you know, get to the point where we are right now, and that's the chance to win the Super Bowl. And everybody here wants it. And so I'm going to try to come in and be that, little, be that little boost to kick the be door down spark. and go get it. You know Mike, is, Mike is going to be go like a, a, a rookie here as yeah. we're entering into Wild Card Weekend with, with the amount of time, the fresh legs that you're going to have oh, the now, freshest. now on field. Yeah. Um, but we're so happy and glad that DeMar's health continues to progress and we keep hearing all these incredible updates to hear and be transferred back to Buffalo mm -hmm. and be here in a Buffalo based hospital um, and many more great things to come for him. It was so cool to to see him kind of live tweet the game mm -hmm. against the Patriots and to hear that dude jumped off the bed <laughs> when Naheem Hines returned it for a touchdown and set off almost every alarm in the ICU. Yeah, yeah. You know him better than all of us do. So I'm sure it's like that. Yep. Demar would do that, duh. It's just, it's, I could talk for three days on, on, on him as a young man and, and what he's done to, to even help me as a person. So, um, yeah, it was just really remarkable, and, and uh, it, was, it was cool to get that win. It's going to be cool to keep it going for him. And then finally, as we're closing out here, uh, we spoke about Demar and just what you guys have been through the last week. Um, but really, when you look at the season as a whole, um, right off the bat, we heard about Dawson Knox's younger brother mm -hmm. passing, and, mm -hmm. and then it was the snowstorms, and it was moving games um, to play in Detroit, and then having three away games in 12 days that you guys were able to win. Yeah. And the fact that right now here, as we sit heading into Wild Card Weekend, this is gonna be the first time all season that you play back-to-back -back one o'clock home games. Mm -hmm. um, and then everything with Demar, the fact that you guys have been through a roller coaster ride of the season, the ups and downs, the the hurdles, the obstacles that you have have had to jump, face, overcome all yeah. this adversity. Yeah. You guys were already a really tight group. Um, we've talked about that a lot, but how much closer are you guys now after facing the season that had things in it that you you would see maybe across three or four seasons yeah. instead of one? Stuff that you've never, you would never see again, um, all in one season. I mean, you, you, you hit it on the head, and that's stuff that we all realize, you know, after the fact. You know, we kind of just been so stuck of trying to get by week to week and mm -hmm. and win games. Like it happens so quickly. Like from a game's over with to a new game, you just you got to switch your mind. You gotta you gotta really think about you know what's coming. And so um, everything you just mentioned, from the snowstorms and to you know to Dawson's family situation um, to the injuries that we had this year, yeah. myself, Vaughn. Didn't um, even mention all those. Yeah, the Thanksgiving snowstorm, the the Christmas snowstorm. Yeah, getting um, stuck in Chicago. Yes, yes, like you know, in the, even our own personal battles, like with my injury, but also even at home, like just with two kids and and you know, power being shut off, and my wife, you know, kind of in panic mode. And so I just feel like everyone's been through so much, and in the Deham situation. Um, this team is, I mean, this city is just taking a, we didn't even talk about back in OTAs with what happened at Tops. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a lot of stuff that has happened this year for, for the city of Buffalo and for this organization, for this team and everybody individually that, um, you know, we're just, it's kind of just scarred up, you know, everything's healing and we just want to keep just, just pounding away. Um, I, could, I, I can't guarantee a Super Bowl. That's something I can't do. But I know that this team and this organization is going to do everything we can week in and week out and to, to go out there and, and, and get a win. And, you know, that's where we're at right now. Yeah, we know how you guys are going to scratch, claw, bite, and try to get into yeah. the Super Bowl just because of how the season has played out, what you guys have been through. And to look now here, um, heading into a game against the Dolphins and to see, yes, we still have guys out that, that are injured and, and have been for quite some time and, and won't make it back for the playoffs, but this team is way healthier than it has yeah. been in most of the season looking at the guys coming back like you and the guys who have been back. Um, so I think you guys are set up in a perfect way, in a perfect position to, to be healthy enough 
to to have the wherewithal enough to, to mm -hmm. make a run for it here and we're we're so excited that you're oh Woo! my gosh i'm ready i can't we're wait like so this excited is, that you're heading back is, to the field oh my gosh yeah you cut this thing off before i go on another rant because yeah. i want to sit here run and talk about this all right day now. yeah seriously i'm excited this show is going to turn into a three-hour show <laughs> we're going to talk about all of our feelings heading into yeah. the playoffs no yeah. but we're so excited for you we're so excited for this team and we're Thank so you. excited for much more content to come as we wrap up this m m show Show. It's been a couple weeks, but we're yeah. back and we're going to be back, back for the playoffs, guys. So make sure you stay tuned. Yeah. Thanks for watching.